and this is Flash at the Dork Table. Today is the 12th of December 2019. <laughs> Sounds weird saying it still. We just got what, a few days into it, but I'll probably be saying 18 until June like I normally do. Uh, so anyway, we're going to start out the program today saying hi to the folks at the reallibertymedia.com chat, where this is basically from. Without the chat room, I would have never even thought of doing this. So if you're interested, reallibertymedia.com, and that'll answer all your questions. And there's a lot of good shit to listen to on the radio, so have fun. And we got in the barman, cowboy tech, Grimner Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Asmo, Chalcedony, Chloe, me, Graham Z. Oh, she sounded a lot better last night. I B Don C, Meister Brow, Pox Fide, Pox Phone, Rain, R L M Fluke, Rooms, Vinny, Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg Noodle, jeez, <laughs> Dakota, Dork Cake Z. Hey, Mental. Frumpy 2, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, Ninson, Dubois, Poxahome, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. December? Is it? Oh, did I do it wrong? Hold on. Let me open up the link here and go and see what I have done. Uh, oh, I did it backwards. Yeah, because. Oh, so it's. uh. One, no, that's year, month, date. Isn't today the 12th? Jan oh, no, it says January. I got, I got um, 2019012. So I think everything is uh, in order there. Hmm. Anyway, today I wanted to do a dork table that's real different. And what I decided to do was I picked two two ideas, and with one of them, I specifically went with like a random link to see what the system has to say about the description of fluoride. So I opened up a link on it. Haven't read it all. I read like a paragraph to see if it was uh, interesting or not, well written, or if it was just a bunch of crap. And I only read a little bit, but I thought it was pretty good, so I'm going to go with that. But today I want to open up with uh, Grimner has been telling me for a long time on the Freakers Ball that the climate change has just been a bunch of crap. Well, I'm not real scientific in the first place. But just the way they were explaining all the stuff that we need is all of a sudden bad for us. So I, I never followed along and you know supported it. But I did find a link. And uh, what it started out to say here, let me find out what the source of it is. I'll even post a copy of it on the RLM chat. Just to show off my computer progress here on the Dork Table Podcast. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit of it. I might read the whole thing. I don't know. We're going to see what I can do with a, a solo Dork Table. Now this is out of a uh, thing called Humans Are Free. And the headline is, Over 30,000 Scientists Declare Climate Change a Hoax. Now, I agree with that. I've always thought that. A lot of people in the real liberty media think that. And then there's people that don't. This is to those people. A staggering 30,000 scientists have come forward confirming that man-made climate change is a hoax perpetuated by the elite in order to make money. Hmm. Now, one of the experts is Weather Channel founder John Coleman, who warns that huge fortunes are being made by man-made climate change proponents such as Al Gore. Man Bear Pig. Hey, I knew he was on to something. And anyway, then it's got it's got a few it's got a picture of a Nice U.S. Coast Guard little ship. It's not a boat. It's a ship. It's just off in a distance. Anyway, it goes on to say things like, Al Gore may emerge from the shadows to declare victory in the global warming debate if Hillary Clinton moves into the White House. So this is an older 
an older story. Let me see if I can find a year from it. Or a, mm, hmm. No, I don't see any anything that indicates how old it is, but by the text. Goes back a couple of years, right? When Hill Dog was running. It goes on to say, yes, if that happens and the new climate regulations become the law of the land, they will be next to impossible to overturn for four to eight years. Now that's a little caption, but the, the story goes on with climate change proponents remain undeterred in their mission, ignoring numerous recent scientific findings indicating that there has been no warming trend at all for nearly two decades. Al Gore's dire predictions of the melting of polar ice on a massive scale have been proved to be completely false. In fact, and it, predictions, when did predictions become science in the first fucking place? But, in fact, in 2014, a year that was touted as being the hottest ever in the Earth's history, there were record amounts of ice reported in Antarctica, an increase in Arctic ice, and record snowfalls across the globe. And I gotta say, just from listening to Moose with uh, the weather reports from where she lives i don't think it's warmed up any it's if, it, if anything it's getting colder but hmm. i'm a snowbird I, I don't care for the snow i like to live where the sun shines but i live in denmark now and well that's a whole nother story <laughs> anyway i'm gonna go on with this link if it, let me go check the chat see if everybody's bored out of their mind or not um We'll interrupt this uh, particular link for a chat update. Ah, uh, Woody's got hit, got to say bye to the dog. Hmm. Don't know the story behind that, but Woody's a big dog lover. As is Circle. As is Miss Moose. So, you know, there's a lot. Of Don C. I mean, there's a there's a lot of dog lovers, and then there's people like me that, yeah, I like them. I like it better when they're around than when they're not around, but when they're not around, eh, they're not around. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he put the dog in a t-shirt and in a warm vest to keep him warm. That's pretty good. And I guess the dog's going to do okay with Woody there. Anyway, nothing going on in the chat. I will resume my previous broadcast. And it says, debunking the 97% lie. On top of those inconvenient truths, the White House's assertion that 97% of scientists agree that global warming is real has been completely debunked. All right, well, let me interrupt with this. If something can be debunked, how the hell did it get printed as the truth in the first place? You know, this is why, <clears throat> excuse me, exactly this is the, the level of, I understand government to be at in every area. doesn't matter. Global warming, money, how they screw up the kids, all that shit. Diversity, uh, open borders, closed borders, uh, handguns, rifles, nuclear weapons. It's all a bunch of crap for the most part. And there's a percentage of people that get involved with it and physically see it. And the rest of us just read stories and sit in the closet waiting for the bomb to go off. All right, back to the story. Uh, I hope I don't repeat myself. I lost my place. Several independently researched examinations of the literature used to support the 97% statement found that the conclusions were cherry-picked and misleading. I'm so sad. I think I'm going to have a snivel. More objective surveys have revealed that there is a far greater diversity of opinion among scientists than the global warming crowd would like for you to believe. Oh, wow. See, there's uh, interruption here again. There's no law that tells the press or TV or whatever information we get doesn't have to be true. They, they don't even claim anything's true. They just print it and shove it in your face for 20 years. And at the end of 20 years, you either you agree with everybody or you don't. And if you don't, guess where you go? The dork table. The dork table. Right here. The dork table. I'm sitting at it. <laughs> I 
I've been at the dark table so long, I've grown to appreciate it. And I think that the people that uh, don't get sucked into this mass deception crap, I mean, it starts out when you're little. They, it, There's no way that we can all accept the same thing the same way unless it's true. And I think if nothing that we're told is true, then the people that tell the stories can say and do anything they want. They can come back 20 years later and, oh, we made an error. Look at this. <laughs> Not we lied, but look, new studies indicate. Well, the old studies indicated the same fucking thing, but you buried those studies so that the public could be bullshitted about the dangers of cannabis. And here we are now, right? Just like with this global warming crap, you know, in 50 years they're going to go, well, then <laughs> they were wrong. Not they lied. Not you were deceived for money and uh, power and prestige and all these other illusions these people are seeking, right? And they control us and right in front of your face with your own consent based on crap. Here, let's go on with some of this crap and see what more exciting things the mainstream has to say. Hmm. Well, this isn't exactly mainstream. This is probably the uh, opposite of it. But, ah, there you go. Continuing with the story. Other mainstream news sources besides the National Review have also been courageous enough to speak out against the global warming propaganda. Even the Wall Street Journal published an op-ed piece in 2015 challenging the anthropogenic global warming pseudoscience being promulgated by global warming proponents. Boy, these eggy fuckers like their fancy words, huh? And of course, there are the more than 31,000 American scientists to date who have signed a petition uh, begging the government to listen to them. That's not going to end well. Challenging the climate change narrative, and 9,029 of them hold PhDs in their respective fields. whoop dee freaking doop -dee. See, the, hmm. this is what I can't get over, is that it doesn't take anything more than a bunch of bullshit to con people, and then at the end of it, when you were the one in the first place telling everybody you could find, hey, this is all bullshit, why do you bother with any of it? Then 20 years later, they go, you know what? Hey, global warming's a bunch of bullshit. Did you know that? <laughs> because, hey, if you don't yell loud enough, I guess nobody's ever going to hear you, because I've been yelling and yelling and yelling, and it took a bunch of scientists to get together and make a petition, see, so they can go crawl into the government and say, please, Mr. Politician, will you look at our paper? And the politicians are going to burn that paper and light a, like a cat, light, light a cat on fire with it. They're not going to change anything. Nothing will come from this news I'm reading to you right now. This is the dork table side of it, you know. The truth is always so unpopular why the truth just they slap it around like an ugly date they're trying to lose at a theater you know but no <laughs> we have freedom of choice as long as you agree with the you know politicians that are telling you what to do oh so anyway that was kind of depressing for a dork table but you know just to give you guys an example of the stuff that you know outside of jokes and carrying on that get my attention. That's one of them. And now I'm going to shift gears into a, a whole nother thing. And I cherry picked this one at random. I mean, I specifically went in with a, I wanted a fluoride link. And I went to and found this link called fluoridealert.org. And in it, it's called water fluoridation first paragraph here what by recovering byproduct fluosilic acid from fertilizer manufacturing water and air pollution are minimized and water authorities have a low cost source of fluoride available to them see that's the whole point of fluoride the low cost source of fluoride is the shit they're putting in the drinking water 
And then this other source of fluoride is the shit that they're putting in the toothpaste and the makeup and all that. But I was telling my wife before the show, I said, you know, if, if it's so fucking safe, why does it have a warning label on a tube of toothpaste? You know, if you accidentally swallow it, you might not be here tomorrow. Call, you know, call for help. So, hmm. My little mind just cannot handle the stories that I'm told to con me into doing shit that by nature I know is absolutely not going to happen. Anyway, let's begin this here little rant with fluoridation chemicals. Now, this is for the eggheads egg heads out there in the RLM. There's going to be a test at four. Get your pencils sharp, children. Now, the fluoride chemicals used to fluoridate drinking water are and I have trouble with this one. Fluorosilicic acid, sodium fluorosilicate, and sodium fluoride. Unlike the fluoride components found in toothpaste or supplements, fluoridation chemicals are not pharmaceutical grade quality. They are instead unpurified industrial byproducts that are collected in the air pollution control systems of certain industries. Due to the lack of processing, these chemicals are known to contain elevated levels of certain contaminants, particularly arsenic. In addition, recent research, <laughs> I love these con jobs, recent research that we just decided to print that you didn't need to know before, including both epidemiological and laboratory invest that first one was pretty fun investigations have detected associations between the fluoridation of water with fluorosilicic acid and elevated lead exposure particularly those living in houses with old pipes okay well see they say old pipes because what they don't want you to know is copper is good, lead not so good. But they even try to con people with, uh, oh, that copper piping is bad for you. But if you look into n natural remedy or you know natural this, natural that, they'll recommend a copper chalice to drink your water out of for a better health. So, what's the PVC pipe doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're screwed those are made out of guess what oil so no matter what we do we're we're getting screwed by these people they just lift the you know they they juggle the numbers they lift the the release on this thing and they shut you down over here with something completely different because if you've ever had to, to do your own plumbing which we most of us don't you you find it a whole lot easier to turn a a nut with your fingers than it is to have to know how hot to heat the pipe for the fitting to seal correctly and you need Teflon tape in there so it won't leak and all these other things in plumbing most people don't have the interest or the time to, to do it right so they've gone to PVC and they've done that to make it easier but then again they've replaced copper you know, that was the idea. Get rid of that copper that's good for you. We replaced that. They replaced it way back with lead because it was cheaper. And now they're going to PVC for the last, I don't know, 40 years, something like that. I remember PVC from back before 911, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's been around for a bit. I've used it. I still use it. But I think it's an excuse to get us away from the shit that's good for us, like everything else. Hmm. And just those first two paragraphs just go to show you, does anybody pay attention, you know, in the mainstream, not the RLM chat or any of that, but, you know, these bozos on freaking Facebook that their biggest concern in life is how many times they've heard a new song. I mean, those kids are never going to hear the shit <laughs> until they're us, you know, they're going to go through their life being lied to and conned by the system. And then one day they're going to wake up to, what? Fluoride is a byproduct of chemical waste? No. They put it in the f drinking water? Then you think about, why would they do a thing like that to us? Hmm. 
Well, children. Oh, I thought I did, Grimner. The I'm going to post it right now. I didn't share the second one. But, yeah, here we go. Because I got all ranty now thinking about all this fluoride in the water stuff. Can't do a dork table without a little rant about something that nobody gives a shit about. Because I don't think people care. I really don't. If there was thousands of people that cared, thousands of people would go to the place and go, Hey, enough. Stop this now. If you're putting it in, how hard could it be to stop putting it in? It's not rocket science. You don't need a degree from Yale to figure out, stop poisoning the fucking water. Well, they've done such a good job of it that the few folks that complain don't seem to be the ones drinking the water. <laughs> Another catch-22 is born. Yeah, I agree. I got ahead of myself, and I usually don't do links on the dark table. First time for everything, I suppose. But I felt in a super creative mood today, and I wanted to pass on to the dark table audience out there in radio land the vast knowledge that i've acquired and why i avoid talking about it it's so depressing and so negative the truth is nothing but wah 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 you can't find anything that's going on that's good for people you know well the french are threatening all week to do a bank run today take out all the currents they can they can all the fiat from the central banks owned by the Rothschilds. Hmm. Now that's the way the story is written. But I wonder how many of those people understand just how deep-rooted this money game that we play truly is. I mean, if they'll throw dirt shit chemicals into the water and lie to you about how good it is for you, what else are they doing? And if you need to think beyond fluoride, well, go vote. Maybe the next guy in charge will fix it. Because I think the rest of us that know better have decided long ago, you know, the, if you encourage them, it makes it worse than ignoring them. I'll tell you that. That freaking, uh, I don't know, the people on the chat rooms, right? They've got, I've got my opinion, they've got their opinions, but to take any of this political um, shit personal, you know, well, Trump's a prick. Yeah, we know that. Uh, but so was Obama. But not if you were on that side of the team. Then Obama was, oh, you can't talk about him like that. He was wonderful. Yeah, I bet the people that he murdered didn't think he was so freaking wonderful. But, you know, we'll, we'll save that for another day. Hey, Becky shows up to the dark table. I haven't seen Becky in a month or two. Maybe longer than that. But Becky popped in just to, in time to hear me ranting about the do's and don'ts of fluoride in your drinking water supply. Now, let's see what this link still got to say. It goes on. It says, uh, number one, the industrial sources of the chemicals. Holy shit. I'm thinking about that. Industrial sources of the chemicals. Wow, man. That just made my... Ooh, I got that uncomfortable something's gonna suck when I read this feeling until recently all fluoridation chemicals were obtained from the west from the wet scrubbing systems of the phosphate fertilizer industry in central Florida wow that sounds horrible already in recent years however an increasing number of water departments have begun purchasing their fluoride chemicals from China. Hmm. Based on recent incidents, it appears that the quality control of the Chinese chemicals is even more lax and variable than the U.S. produced chemicals. Phosphate Fertilizer Industry Florida U.S. In the process of converting phosphate rock into soluble fertilizer two very toxic fluoride gases are released hydrogen fluoride and silicone tetrafluoride in the past the phosphate industry used to let these two gases vent freely into the atmosphere 
This, however, caused severe environmental damage among downwind communities, including widespread cattle poisonings, scorched vegetation, and various human health complaints. See that? And there you go. If you have results like that from something that's that big, no, don't shut it down. No, 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 no. Let's not stop. Let's just fix it. Because, you know, they've got people figuring, well, if they can create it, they will they can make it work properly. I don't think that's what government does. I think government takes something that would run perfectly if it was done according to the directions. They burn the directions. Then they get everybody drunk. And then they play with the thing like it's a fucking toy. And we end up with fluoride in the water. They call it a bill. I call it. A weekend with some hookers and some uh, alcohol but you know my opinion i've never been the most popular opinion maker guy let's see so ha 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 ha, ha. oh we have people quoting and we have people saying hi and we got people doing all kinds of crazy stuff in the real liberty media.com chat yeah, Becky hasn't seen Cakes. Cakes hasn't seen Becky. And you know, it's like uh, we got this little RLM to come back to whenever we stray away from it and go find something to do. <laughs> anyway, I'm kind of enjoying this horrible link in a sick way because it just goes to prove that to me, you know, not to you guys, but it proves to me that what I believe is true about what is told is true because i don't believe two words anybody says anymore well maybe my wife maybe one or two words out of three (laughs) right honey i'm not that i haven't completely gotten well pretty close the uh no it strikes me that uh, all the negative vibrations like rob rob loves to bring that to my attention but i think there's more to all the vibrations and the and the resonance of vibrations the results of what government does to us under bullshit stories and crap you know and this is just water think of all the other things that have been added to their menu along the last 60 70 80 150 years you know they've got people convinced that uh, vaccines are going to save them so here they are been doing this vaccination thing since 1850 and it took until now for the masses to even get an inkling of, of information that this is not the way to go. And how I think they pull it off. They've got to split up in so many groups. You know, a group for this and a group for that, so on and so forth. Then they got the gender split, male and female. So when uh, you have a child and, and uh, you're a newborn is born into this new time and all this the rules have changed behind our adult backs we don't know all the shit that's going on we're just how often do you spend uh hanging out in a hospital with somebody that's having a baby it's not an everyday occurrence so the surroundings of it whatever they may be when you go to it you adjust yourself to those surroundings and i think You know, when they got me involved in all that stuff, you know, where I was seeing it with my eyes, I felt this horrible uncomfortability because of the security the hospital had and, you know, uh, cameras everywhere and nobody trusts anybody. Everybody's a freaking baby snatcher and everybody's a sick fuck that's going to, you know, get everybody else infected with some horrible disease. And then they got problems like nurses that don't, don't change gloves between children that they're tending to. Little insignificant things like that so that when the inoculations inoculation, work and you know kill the kid, at the time what they would do is blame it on circumstances. Oh, the nurse didn't do this, and oh, this didn't happen, and oh, that, that. Never a direct point to the inoculation, but everything to misdirect you and get you away from that. You know, Oh, no, you don't want to think about that. Let's think about this without the oh no in it to make it obvious <sighs> anyway so here we sit you know, and i've put up links for years about um, medical 
Rockefeller medicine. I don't think people have the time in the first place to uh, spend two hours watching a movie about what cancer treatment truly is. And if they did, and they didn't like what they saw, then they're not going to watch the whole thing, are they? But I'm going to try to get through this entire link. It's a long baby, too, so it might take up the whole dork table with, you know, my random information rantings. But let's see what else does it say. Uh, eventually, as a result of both litigation and regulation, the phosphate industry installed wet scrubbers to trap the fluoride gases. The collected liquid in these scrubbers, hydrofluorosilicic acid, is entered into storage tanks and shipped to water departments throughout the country. In 1983, an official at the EPA stated, excuse me, the agency's support for this process, dot, dot, in regard to the use of fluorosilicic acid as the source of fluoride for fluoridation, this agency regards such use as an ideal solution to a long-standing problem. By recovering byproduct fluorosilicic acid from fertilizer manufacturing, water and air pollution are minimized and water authorities have, here we go, a low-cost source of fluoride available to them. So, just like with cannabis, you know, they're just playing a word game with you. There's two different kinds of fluoride, and one of them you wouldn't want to give to a burglar that was trying to steal your grandma's underwear. And the other one, you wouldn't willingly, if you were offered a choice, I don't think you'd go, hey, give me a glass of that and let's see what happens if you read all this stuff first. So what they do is they lie to you. <laughs> it's good for your teeth and your bones. Makes you the hit of the party. You're going to score with the babes if you use fluoride. Of course, then they tell you the same thing later about Budweiser. <laughs> we all know how that works. <laughs> Oh, uh, the more you drink, the more the women's love you. <laughs> well, at least that's what you think while you're drinking it. But <laughs> like fluoride, it works on your third eye, my friend. Your third eye, the one that sees everything. Hmm. And here we sit, right? I think that there's a lot of people that are at some point aware there's different levels of physical reality whatever that means to the individual right but we all got some sense of it people that think like we do so to speak you know the rob works and the larry woods and people that took the time to go a little bit further and grab a book and see what the book said and then after they read the book say hmm this doesn't sound right i wonder what this person has to say about it or that and start following you know get to an uh, an answer that's not only credible but from a good source but true you know stopping at the first door just because it's a door and you're looking for a door but there's 150 doors but hey this is the closest door i think i'll just use that door fuck the rest of those doors i don't want to go i want to stay with this cheap easy first door and that's what education is <laughs> to me you know because anytime I would ever ask a question in school when I was in school teacher would always oh we don't talk about those things in in school well no the stuff that they talk about I don't even remember it anymore what the fuck did I do from what how long did I go I went regularly I guess until I was 11 then about 12 I started ditching school and by 16, I was compl I wanted to get that driver's license. And the only way to get it was to go to school. So they kind of got me for a few months with that, go with that little scam. But as soon as I got it, I dumped school. And the few times that I attempted to go back to school, uh, I was not good at school. Could not. I was like that Einstein character. Whatever the hell my problem is in school, I can't learn it. Don't care. Don't want to... Uh, I don't like the pressure. I don't like the style. Something. But give me a link on fluoride. 
with all kinds of fancy words in it. And, you know, I can get to the bottom of what all this means through all their fancy, you know, uh, scientific names for acids and collected liquids and all this crap and get right to the bottom line, which is it's a waste product and the government puts it in your water and they tell you it's good for you, but it's a waste product. How could it be good for you? Here we are. We're stuck in this fucking loop where people... They believe what, you know, the closest door to them. This is my theory. You know, because it's hard to tell a good story. So we live with the shitty stories. Who's got time to sit down and actually spend a couple of hours or weeks or whatever it may be looking for the truth? And then once you find it, what do you do with it anyhow? Here we are, all us freaking geniuses, and we know fluoride's not good for us. But they're still selling it. You know, oil's not good for us. They're still selling that. Heroin's not good for us. They're still selling that. So, hmm. maybe what's good or bad for us isn't the problem. The problem is when the management of whatever's serving you is too big to be accountable, shit like this is going to happen. I think it was Vinny that was bragging about he's got a well. He doesn't even have to uh, drink that shit off the city. You know, he doesn't live in the city. Well, I don't necessarily live in the city, and I don't think they do the the things here that they do at home. Uh, there's different rules. You know, every country has their own guidelines, and you know, this is a place where they're they're trying to maintain their um, their population not trying to kill it off or ruin it they're really trying to hold on to their their history and their culture and i can see why the press bashes denmark because they're not politically correct they are to this on the surface but when push comes to shove no you can't budge these people it's like the smoking law down at the bar. You know, they agree with it. And if they get caught, they'll pay the fine, but they're not going to abide by it because they don't they didn't weren't for it. And somehow in this culture, it's not it's not a big deal. I mean, wow. I can just imagine somebody walking into a bar in the in California and lighting a cigarette. You'd probably have 911 calls, you know. He's smoking a cigarette. He's ruining the air. You know, in the meantime, there's a guy out in the back in the bathroom, you know. Well, never mind. We all know how that goes because we get regular reports from the Starbrook crowd. Mm. Ah, enjoying a nice sip of elixir. Now, I'm kind of caught between now ranting about how I feel about this crap or reading about <laughs> what the... This is what the internet openly puts available for everybody to read. Now, I don't read into this stuff as well as like Vinny. Vinny went to the background and went to find out how many people are really using um, YouTube. And I never pursued that, so I didn't know how to do it. But I know how to do this, which is to find the answer to something that is irritating me. And sometimes I really don't like the answer. And most of the time when I find the answer, I can't even accomplish the answer. There's no way to do it. But it leaves me in this place where I feel that comfort of knowing. You know, at least I can make a decision based on knowledge. I'm not just following the guy in front of me because he's going through the closest door so we don't have to walk further than it. You know, I want to get this over with. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Some things, some things should be savored. Maybe uh, looking for an answer the quickest, shortest possible way. You know that 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 cheap shit, that garbage that we're fed every day. Oswald shot Kennedy from behind, but his head magically went magnetic and pulled toward him. <laughs> it was a miracle bullet. It went through everybody, <laughs> but it only killed one guy. And you know, in the you'd think in the '60s, with as many people that were familiar with weapons, that saw what that guy, you know, what happened to him, 
they, they would have just immediately said, well, no, that's bullshit. But no. And here we are 50 freaking years later and people are still debating the fucking results of something that happened that they filmed happen that has been explained in 6,000 different ways how it happened but it could only have happened one way and whatever the truth is it's in there somewhere <laughs> that's how these idiots get away with conning us because they go well we told you the truth sort of kind you know it's it's in there if you dig deep enough and have a you know, dictionary or three, but for you, you know, for you people out in the public, you're going to get this story that is so, it's so hard to digest and so unbelievable that you're going to come out of it at the end of it, where if you doubt one word we say, you're going to be the weirdo that people go, hey, stay away from him. He thinks there's a conspiracy to kill the president. Well, this is after the guy's dead. There's a conspiracy. We got a dead body. <laughs> a miracle bullet done in public. Blah, blah. Fucking blah. 50 years go by. We get the same crap from the same fucking government. And they tell us things are better. Mm. Wow. Trump took over two years ago. And, you know, and I heard, oh, things will be better. And when Obama took over before that, I heard, oh, things will be better. And Bush, before Bush, it was, what's his name, Clinton, then Bush, before him, and before him. And it goes on and fucking on and fucking on. And every time you go forward, the story is, well, this time it'll be better. And at the end of that particular reign of lies and deceptions, you hear the next guy say the same thing. It's all his fault. Oh, that Obama guy did all this. Blame him. I me look me, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm working for you. Now what they did was they split us in these groups. The system appeals to a certain group. The newspapers and the TV and internet, whatever have you, just floods the information waves with all this crap. And that's what people see. The closest door is good enough for me, baby. I ain't working. I ain't walking. I ain't going anywhere. I ain't no slave. <laughs> I have to pay for my truck. Now, leave me alone. I got to go to work. Oh, wow. See, I have to pay my bills. I have to go to work. I'm free. Hmm. Even I know better than that. Come on. And I don't even have an education. Christ, I dropped out of school as soon as I figured out what dropping out of school was about. <laughs> and never went back with a... Um, a a good enough attention span or interest to succeed at it. Because deep down inside, I just knew what education was. And I'm so disappointed that that was the best they could do with me. I mean, good Lord. You would think that uh, the school system would encourage people to follow ideas and do things that are interesting. But no, no, no. It was all about sit down, shut up, and do what everybody else is doing. And I was always fast, so I was like the first one finished and always the, are you sure you're, you don't want to look over your answers, Mr. Bias? And I'd say, no, I don't want to look over anything. I did it. I'm finished. Don't get smart with me. I was looking for three days off of school and they wouldn't bait. Sometimes they'd let me fight them and throw me out and sometimes they wouldn't. But to get to the answer in a school... Nah, you're not there to learn anything. You're there to be told what to say to other people that are in special groups. And they call it education, but it's it's not. We've uh, there's levels of it, is in my opinion, anyhow. And when you get to the you know to the Bushes and the Kennedys and all that crap, those people don't even know we're alive. We're so conned. You know, celebrity. Oh, he's so wonderful. Look what he did for us. Mm. Oh, well, he was so wonderful that George Bush and his pals decided to put a stop to him. Mm. And look, we still got Kissinger. He's still around. Guy's like four foot. He's like a cube with legs. You know, and he sits there and he's pompous and arrogant. And he's so old. You would think he would have 
become nice by now, but now he's like Hillary. These people are so full of their self, they don't give a shit about us. And yet, the public adores them. They've got followers and books written about him. And oh, look at all the wonderful things they did. Well, no. Anyway, if you've been on the RLM for any length of time, you probably know about all about that shit too. Because this ain't a place to teach nobody nothing. And I'm not using this fluoride thing as a tool to teach. I was making a point of this is open information for everybody to see. This was the first freaking link that popped up when I typed in fluoride. And I came to fluoride alert. Wow. I was thrown thrown aside for a minute thinking, I guess this isn't a very often researched topic. But if they're, they're using China. Eh, let's see. We finished this first uh, part of the story. I got, I ran off on it. This is the dork table. So I ran off on a rant. I can do that because it's my show. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now let's try to get back to uh, finding where I was. I'm going to start somewhere anyway. Others at EPA, however, have voiced their objections to this process. In 2000, Dr. William Hersey the senior vice president of EPA's Headquarters Union of Scientists and Professionals stated, If this stuff gets out into the air, it's a pollutant. If it gets into the river, it's a pollutant. If it gets into the lake, it's a pollutant. But if it gets right into your drinking water system, it's not a pollutant. There's got to be a better way to manage this stuff. <laughs> and it says see interview after that because these are little excer uh, excerpts out of a bigger thing and then back to the article but wow right in your face see double talk admiralty court bullshit law uh, politics religion education all that double talk crap everything in the freaking world and all it does is confuses us as a collective and then we uh, what there's not even an argument about this Th this there's nobody saying hey stop this at least the french are gathering and putting yellow down i mean talk about notice me bright yellow vests and then they're gonna peacefully demonstrate against their government by draining all the currency they can get their freaking paws on out of the rothschilds banks now i think that's that's admirable. <laughs> I don't know if, if I was in a position to do it, I think I'd join them. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm now, now, I'm finished. I don't work. Um, I'm old now, so my interests are way different than uh, what I can do changing. I'm not going to change any damn thing. Not me. <laughs> but I don't want to change. I like, I like me just all fucked up just the way I am, you know. Uh, my on and off buttons don't work too good, but something inside was prepared for me to become as old as I am, you know, and wow. When I think of the people I've outlived just out of, you know, uh, taking better care of myself and I was the, uh, I was the black sheep that smoked dope and ran off and did all kinds of crazy and th insane things and traveled and didn't have, take nothing serious. Well, <laughs> I've said this 50 times. My poor mother, when she was alive, she told me until I was in my 50s. She said, eh, ah, you're just a late bloomer. You'll, you'll find out what you want eventually. It'll come your way someday. And oddly enough, popped up this little Danish woman. And I went, oh. Um, who knew? You know, but it brought me to a, a place where I could kind of gather my thinking and settle down and not be in that chaos. And that was quiet when I was in Copenhagen, quieter than some places I'd been previously, but still a little too loud. And uh, she came up with, hey, let's go check out some places in the country. And I will recommend this to everybody every chance I remember to say it. If you're not living in the country and you have the means, go do it. It is phenomenal. There's nothing like it. Small town country living is uh, has definitely replaced the city, in my opinion. <laughs> so if you're in one, 
Wow. Fluoride must really be good where you're at. That's all I can think. Anyway, let's go with, uh, where, where did I leave off here? I think Chinese industries, <coughs> cough, cough, it is becoming increasingly common for U.S. water departments to purchase their fluoride chemicals from China. While little appears to be known about the source of these chemicals, recent incidents indicate that the contents of these chemicals can vary, vary quite dramatically. <laughs> Jeez. It was recently reported, for example, that a number of water plants using Chinese fluoridation chemicals were noticing a mysterious residue in the treated water. <laughs> Although the CDC issued public assurances about the safety of these chemicals, it remains unclear exactly why and how often this problem occurs. See, when things are so big that they, they get managed from thousands of miles away, nah, there, there's the key to the doom. Yeah, Think small. Get, get off this... Um, I don't know. I can't really say. People, what, what can you do about it? What could we do? Hmm. I guess we could just complete, continue to complain about it and bitch and oh, let people in on, oh, look what they're doing to us. But what are we going to ever do to stop it? Maybe people don't really want to stop it. Hmm. So I was talking about this particular thing. Uh, when you're ill with something that is... Uh, crippling or can kill you there is a there's a time gauge on that where it, so much damage can be done before you're halfway dead or halfway crippled so if you can catch that before the too far mark where there's no return you can only repair uh, the an equal amount of damage in an equal amount of time and i don't know any better way to translate that but it may not it may not be working too good but well i guess uh, cuz you can take rust off a off a bumper with a bottle of coke coca cola in mexico <laughs> so, so you know and it's shit like that things i've seen on video links that just wow you know the, we're so we're so easily led all of us not just you i you know i always say you guys cuz i'm the one talking but I went through my days with sodas and beer and you name it, and I've done it. And without any concern for the damage I was physically doing myself, because first and foremost, these things are available. And secondly, they're plentiful. But then beyond that, nobody arrests you for drinking a fucking Coke and smoking a you know, Marlboro. But boy, you sit down with a bottle of Jack and a you know big bag of weed, and you're gonna attract some idiots that are gonna get you in trouble. And it's either gonna be more of your friends or it's gonna be the police. But when you mix things together that shouldn't be mixed together, <laughs> wild shit happens. And the funny part is they always blame the pot. Yeah. You know, oh, they were smoking dope. Yeah, well, what about those three bottles of wine over there? You got any explanation for that? <laughs> anyway, that's just my soft side for potheads coming through. Shall I continue with this exciting epic tale of human poisoning through modern manufacturing and legal processes? Hmm. Let's see what the reallibertymedia.com chat has to say. They could all well be talking about something else. Oh, in fact, they are. I don't think my epic saga is going over with the crowd today. But I'm still going to continue with it and interrupt myself with, you know, wise and interesting commentary. <laughs> I miss Vinny, but uh, nah, I'm going to do radio solo for a while and take a Vinny break. I'll put Vinny in a timeout. But it is a lot easier to do radio with a partner for me than it is to do it solo. So I'm going to punish you all with my solo. <laughs> Anyway, arsenic contamination. Oh, this is really not good, people. After being captured in the scrubbing system, the fluorosilicic acid is either shipped as is 
and in parentheses, an acidic liquid, or is converted into dry powders, sodium fluorosilicate and sodium fluoride. Whether shipped in its original liquid form or converted into powder, the fluorosilicic acid does not undergo purification procedures. <laughs> As a result, fluorosilicic acid has been found to contain various contaminants, particularly arsenic. Yeah, we all know, and after a hard day at work, I like to go out to the old arsenic bar and get me a double right after work. Hey, give me a double shot of arsenic. And, of course, they call the police on you and have you locked up because that would be a act of suicide. <laughs> but, see, according to the, you know, to the law and to the sciences, this stuff is freaking lethal, disgusting, and deadly. But it's legal. It's not moral and it's not ethical, but you're going to drink it, whether you like it or not. Now, to continue with this epic saga of arsenic contamination. The level of arsenic found in fluoridation chemicals is not trivial. According to a review in the American Water Works Association's publication, OpFlow, the amount of arsenic that fluoridation adds to finished water is hardly a minimal amount. Wow. Man, this is making my tumor bleed. I'm feeling warm all inside, I can tell. <laughs> I wonder if I get any of those gamma rays, if I could turn into the Hulk and just go out there and tear them all apart. <laughs> Something crazy off the dork table. Wow, that was just messed me up thinking about that. Is hardly a minimal amount, people. Okay. Now I'm continuing. The arsenic problem is unique to fluoridation chemicals as no other water treatment chemical has a problem with arsenic contamination. As demonstrated in the OpFlow review, about 90% of the arsenic contributed by treatment chemicals is attributable to fluoride addition. So how much arsenic do fluoridi fluoridation chemicals contain? Well, it depends on who you ask and when you ask them. Whew. Wow, man, this is, is it just me? I wonder if it's just me. Or I've cured the problem I've had, wondering how many people listen, because this is really bad. I'm sure when I listen back to this one, I'm going to go, wow. Okay, Grimner says it's a soggy saga, Flash somebody, but still interesting. Well, I was a little concerned that with all this depressing freaking crap they're doing to us, you guys might go, hey, I'm going to go have some fun. Who wants to hear this shit? But I said I was going to do it, and by goody grabbers, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trying. Okay, now here we go. Paragraph NSF 2000. In 2000, the National Sanitation Foundation, NSF, released the results of its tests that showed fluoridation chemicals can add as much as 1.66 ppb arsenic to the finished water. I don't know what that measurement means. I'm not that smart. But arsenic, hmm, acceptable fucking levels of arsenic in the fluoridated water. Wow, can we be any more ignorant than this? I mean, come on, this is the collective of collectives. Well, I guess we deserve this shit. You know, if we know all this, it's printed for us to understand it. And, you know, it's semi this is not that complicated. Eh, some of the words are a little, but the idea behind it, they're putting poison in your drinking water, but it's legal, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. You can slow it down, but it will never end. <laughs> this is how I hear government. I don't never hear government as, well, there's a good example of great English, but I never hear the government encouraging anything. It's always build a wall, bomb the place, just, you know, take back our country, all these fucking negatives. And there's, it doesn't go anywhere because this is the foundation, water. 
people where 80 percent water your body your, your machine that you use every day to exist depends on this this is the foundation not what you know not your links not your freaking mommy and fucking daddy this is about the reality of life we're water carbon-based fucking life forms and we have the people in power uh seats of decision leeches that be whatever your damn name for these dumb asses is they started out as representatives and now they've taken on the the label of leaders and they got followers and we're re we're doomed this is it this is where we got because we have laws and government and I'm beside myself with it. I can't believe what I'm reading. Although I know it, uh, I can see from the results of life. There is more going on negative than we're ever told. Because they bury it in these documents that are so hard to read. Even for, you know, I'm not stupid. But this is a little bit beyond. I wouldn't be interested in reading this if I wasn't interested in why the hell are the government poisoning us? And then when I saw them upgrade to getting their shit from China, wow, let's even import the poison. Let's not even make domestic poison. Let's get something that, I don't know, might have an arsenic kick to it for those people that like to drink. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to call it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that bell thing is, uh, I've got my... Uh, things uh, on ring a bell on RLO and I need to turn them off but I'll do it after the show because that's the only thing that I could figure out at mental like something I did and it gives me that ding <laughs> and I tracked it down to the real liberty dot org and I have to do some adjusting to that I hope I remember but until that you're going to get those loud when I get a comment thing I get dinged. let's see Wow, give me a second to just absorb what I just read. I, it's so depressing to uh, be treated like this. <laughs> you know, with the consent uh, of the governed. And no uh, what, no resistance. You know, uh, well, let's build a wall. Building a fucking wall. Of course you'd want to build a wall. Your brain's all fried on fucking fluoride. You don't have any idea what's going on. You think you do building a wall is going to change anything what about all the rest of it there's two oceans and a border up on canada you know there's a lot of ways to get over a wall <laughs> walls never stopped anybody before i even saw i saw something on uh, mines today <laughs> i don't know it could have been a 20 foot tall wall but you know an axe or a sledge and a little patience put a nice hole down about I don't know, two feet off the ground. <laughs> Crawl under the damn wall. Because it won't collapse if you just put a hole big enough to go through. <laughs> but, oh, Americans. I don't know. Maybe it's not Americans. Maybe it's just people. I don't even know what. All this country and state and gender and all these other fucking bogus ways they treat us with. You know, um. The divisions. Oh, you're different than him because he's black and you're not. Okay, but what has that got to do with me? You know, it's the way you look is not what you are. <laughs> well, there you go. It's a matter of perspective. Because some people, very shallow people out there in the world, you know who you are. They live their entire existence and they judge the... The physical and the financial attributes of the people they associate with. Oh, you don't make enough money for me to associate with. You are less, you know, you're a lesser than. You go under the bridge and go enjoy your crack pipe. And uh, I'll watch it on TV as a form of amusement because I'm better than you. And we got sucked in all this um, lame competitive I'm better than you shit and in the meantime while they're bullshitting us with all these fancy stories and and garbage they're doing this to the water and playing it down like well it's not that big a deal 
I'm going to go back to, wait a minute, I don't think so. I think whatever they're telling us is the opposite of what's true. And here I found the first random link on fluoride, and it proves everything that you believe could be bad about this situation. Your worst nightmares have come true. This is what the United States, Denmark, England, fucking whatever country you live in, these are the things the governments do to the people. And, wow, when you put up any kind of resistance, they send the police, you know, water guns, what do you call them, water tanks. If you protest or if you want to get together and beg the government to give you permission, oh, we got a petition and everything. Yeah, that's exactly what they want so they can read it and light a cigarette with it and tell you no. As long as we ask for better things than we have, we're going to get less than what we ask for because that's the nature of begging. And I'm, for one, I don't, I've never been a good beggar, I don't think. I don't think I'd make a good beggar now. But I'm getting to the age where physical fighting, no, that's going to end badly for me. Mm, mental fighting, well, how do you fight mentally? I don't see that. It's more like agreeing to uh, a story. You know, because nobody has any proof of anything, in my opinion. All I've ever seen in life is just somebody else's opinion about something I'm looking at. And I either believe what they tell me, or I make up my own mind about what I see. And the bad side of that is I got all this background information people have stuffed into me over the years through school, parenting, and all that other crap I, I survived in my younger days. What well, It left a, like an information trail, you know, where I look at something and I observe it and I identify it in my mind. That's a house. That's a tree. That's a this. And then there's all that other stuff that my mind is doing for me that's so buried. I don't really even realize I'm doing it. For example, here's a weird way to explain it, but sometimes when I'm walking, and I've got my little bag, and I'm going to the store, and I'm on autopilot, and in my mind, I'm, I'm looking where I'm going, and I'm walking, and every, and for a brief instant, sometimes I realize, wow, I'm not even looking where I'm going, I'm on autopilot, and I haven't walked into anything yet, and I catch myself, and I pay attention again. <laughs> now, I don't know if other people are like that, but I'm like that. Now, could this be a result of all the inferior crap that I've been you know, ingesting for 59 years? That's a long time to poison somebody. And it just goes to show, on top of it, how tough a human being truly is. Because the damage that they do, although it takes forever for it to actually grip you and put you down, I think that besides the the uh, the illness that's attached to it it's the mental changes that these uh, things are designed to put you through so that when you're confronted with the truth you'll go oh the government will protect me the government wouldn't lie to me oh no no you don't know what you're talking about you know i'm i'm never going to uh i'm never going to be able to understand how a uh, Somebody could have the information in front of them and still be stuck on stupid with a story. And that may not be the kindest way to put it, but, you know, I mean, example after example for, I don't know how many, thousands of years. Uh, oh, I don't, hey, Hansel, Hansel doesn't have any idea about anything. Hansel's a bigot. I don't really care what Hansel says. For, um, Graham, that's why I block him, because, uh, Wow, you know, it's one thing to not like somebody, but it's when you start, when all there is to um, bitch about is they smoke pot and they're stupid, well, how do you come to those two conclusions? Based on what? You know, ah, so I smoke pot, and half the damn RLM claims they smoke pot too. So, why is it always me? Why? Because I won't kiss his ass. I'm one of the few people that openly has no respect for a liar and a, a guy that lives on other people's misery. I mean, every freaking time you see him, he, where's Slim Jim Flim? I need somebody to abuse. Uh, 
just horrible. It's never good. He's never gotten anything good to say. So, and if he wants to call me a beggar, I encourage him to do that because he'll never in a million years figure out how I got where I am in life and could be so freaking happy. And I don't put anything into it. I'm just me. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, I don't encourage shit. I just do stuff. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. There, there you go. It's, it's not, uh, it's not a contest. I thought, I thought years ago it was a contest, you know, and, uh, the, uh, hmm, that competition thing. Wow, man, my brother and, and my father and all, all the people I grew up with always competing. I was a sw competitive swimmer for years. What I didn't see is the edge it put on me until I was in my 50s because I was so uh, proficient as a child that as I grew, I expected things to stay at the same levels that they were at when I was 20. I had no idea about degeneration. I had no idea about fluoride in the water is going to fuck me up too. I mean, I'm not immune to all this. My senses and my abilities have been um, chipped away at over life. Now, I could still go to the wall. I did it with my wife and take a little picture and make a bigger picture from looking at it. And the style that I draw in is very unique to people that are trained artists. They, they don't know how I do it. And neither do I. I just let my hand go and it does what it does and then other people have this thing it's always irritated me they help and because of the way that independent thing my father did with me you can't help me today i want to do what i want to do the way i want to do it and i don't think i'll ever change from from that but i can look at other people's stuff and not be critical in in the judgment of what they did and I think that's a unique thing, you know. Um, I'm good at finding criticism too, man. When somebody pisses me off, I let them know it. But on the other hand, when somebody does something that I appreciate, like oh, Cowboy Tech, that man has never said a bad word to anybody. And a couple of months ago, there was a <laughs> I think his name was Apostle, and he was on here on the RLM chat one morning, and he didn't like the way things were going for whatever reason. And he decided to start taking it out on Cowboy Tech. And Cowboy kept his cool. Not one fuck off did Cowboy Tech utter. He handled it very well. He handled it in a way that I wouldn't. I just go right to the bone. Fuck you. Click. Where's the ignore button? Next case. You know, but um, maybe that's a result of the fluoride for, you know, for me. Is it war on my ability to be patient with lesser minds? You know? When I feel that you're inferior in your behavior, I tend to ridicule and abuse. And that's just the from the upbringing. That's what I know. Now, trying to get away from it is a conscious thing. You can't do this in the back of your mind. It ain't going to work. You have to constantly be aware of your own behavior. And I don't think I can do that. I try. <laughs> I know I'm responsible for how I feel about what you say, but when you know you've got this life that you live and when you let people know you, you know, where the, you're friendly and you communicate on a regular basis and you call each other a friend, and then one day your friend pushes the joke a little too far when you've asked him before not to, well, then you just take it at, well, I need a little space, you know. And Hansel isn't one of those people. I'm talking about Vinny. Uh, Hansel, I could give two fucks what Hansel says. It's all crap anyway. So mm, the day that Hansel comes out praising me on the reallibertymedia.com, that's the day to worry about Hansel, not me. <laughs> but I ain't going to trust him because I don't, I don't think anything he says is true. Oh, uh, you got that right, Mr. Grimner. Grimner quotes. Flash somebody. Cowboy Tech is a clever motherfucker. And that's true. I, I think so as well. And I think that a lot, about a lot of the people here, you know, everybody's got their contribution except one guy. And uh, that's how I don't. Oh, the dog's gone. <laughs> My wife's timing. The dog is is uh, clinging to her right now. She says, no, right when I'm talking about what I'm talking about. And she says, no, honey, not you, the dog. 
so you guys couldn't hear what she said and anyway i'm having me a wild rant on the dork table podcast for no particular reason but um i think i'm going to go back to my article and this has really um this is there for everybody to read right i wonder how many people read it don't understand what it means is that possible do you think that that maybe in the the mind of somebody that's you know uh, for the government and all that kind of crap that they figure well if the government says it's okay what do the details matter hey look who showed up moose girl showed up to the dork table what a surprise yeah you didn't miss anything today i've been doing the unusual i have been reading a long 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 link about fluoride and i think and in between been ranting about you know this that the other bouncing around like a true dork so let's go on with the (laughs) readings of a madman whether by coincidence or not the nsf that was uh the nsf is where is that name nsf failures blah 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 well they threw me off again okay has been able to bypass this problem thanks to the results of new tests it has conducted in the wake oh here we go with the con job of epa's enactment of the stricter arsenic mcl wow according to these new tests there is still detectable arsenic contamination in 43 percent of fluoridation chemicals however the highest arsenic level detected would contribute 0.6 ppb to finished water and like i said i don't know what that measurement represents and thus not exceed the 1.0 ppb product failure threshold Oh, so they're over halfway. Now, here, here's another thing with numbers, right? Not that theory I got about illness. If you're over half the way to the uh, end, you can't repair all the damage because you've gone beyond the point of no return. So if you're at 6.6 of a 1.0, well, you're over halfway. So mm, chances are you're not going to go backward. All right. Anyway, unfortunately... The veracity of the NSF's new test data is virtually impossible to verify. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Although the NSF is responsible for regulating the quality of water treatment chemicals, and although it acts in many ways like a government agency, here we go, it is a private organization and not subject to the same disclosure and accountability requirements of a government agency and that's man sub subcontract out your you know your dirty work to some third hand and just tell the people what you want them to know just like usual wow does everybody feel good about this i'm just loving this link (laughs) anyway how's jackson doing today miss moose you and that dog getting along are you in tune Because, you know, when you got a dog, dogs live, their life revolves around balance. When, you know, like when Hannah goes off barking and crazy, that's because something disturbed her calm little, little world. Of course, they, they hear so well, they hear somebody walking two houses down or walking a dog or she can smell the air and know what's going on in it and whatnot. So she's more sensitive, but it's still, when it's balanced and things are the way she wants, she's calm and easy. But when something gets out of pocket, throws her off mental balance, whatever that is for her, bark, 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 yap, 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 run around the house like a nut job. And uh, I wonder how much of that reminds me of me. <laughs> well, you know, when uh, when I'm off balance, like I am today, can't focus my mind's just jumping from concept to concept Um, i'm sitting in judgment of my peers things that i don't normally like to do but i thought i'd take this dork table and bend a rule that i have with myself and and do something different 
So let's see. I'm going to continue with this disgusting, horrible fluoride link. All right. Now, here we're at number three. Good Lord, I'm going to run out of time and not be able to finish this thing. But that's just as well, probably. All right. Here we go. Cough, cough, cough. Silic silico fluorides and lead. Wow. This just gets better and better. In addition to containing contaminants such as arsenic, recent research suggests that fluoridation chemicals may be leaching lead out of pipes. <laughs> wow, what a what a coincidence. Uh, since lead exposure during childhood can cause a range of serious effects, including reduced IQ and asthma, the possibility that fluoridation may be increasing lead exposure among some children is a serious issue which deserves very careful consideration which it has not yet received because <laughs> that's what they do they just promise you the freaking world and then don't do nothing just put a little bit more shit in the soup and give out more soup free soup don't read what's in it you won't want any free soup and then you don't hear them tell you at the end don't worry don't look at the ingredients just free soup and people line up because they got no soup and then they get soup but the bad side of it is now we've got a, a society where i grew up apparently now there's tent cities in la tent cities in los angeles and that's common and I know when I was growing up in L.A., L.A. was the, or California was the strange state, and all the weirdos were there, and all this, that, and the other. Oh, I was going to have an earthquake and fall off into the ocean, and you name it, and they said it about California. What I didn't realize when I was growing up in it was they were right, and all this shit was being manufactured to happen the way it happened. <laughs> Tent cities, people living in the street. Uh, what? I mean... Hmm. I couldn't imagine when I was there I didn't see it because I wasn't living in a place that that was necessary now Jacksonville had a not a huge population I guess there were about 80,000 when I lived in Jacksonville North Carolina and uh, that's not really a huge population but Compared to 10,000, it is. <laughs> so I've downsized. And then the island was way smaller. Wow. I could walk undisturbed on that island for plenty of times. I, I can't even count the amount of time I did it. You know, I'd, Some days I'd be off on a, on a wander to go uh, go over to Kelly's. It was like, a, I don't know, a mile and a half, mile and a half or two-mile walk, something like that. And by the time I'd gotten there, I'd sometimes realize I didn't run into anybody else walking on the street at all. Time of day, uh, amount of people out and about, all these little variables that weighed in. There was never uh, traffic. There was never too many people. It was always just enough, just not too many. Whatever enough is, I hit my limit in Kirkwall. Then went to Copenhagen for a while. Got that city itch back. Started talking to Cirque about it. Now, back to a small thing. But I didn't even know that the small uh, thing was uh, an option until I went, accidentally ended up in Kirkwall for the two and a half years. And then once I was spoiled by that, uh, I think that that cured me of um, big populations and big crowds. Anyway, let's continue. Wow, this thing is so bad. Since the addition of fluorosilicic acid is known to increase the acidity of water. Okay, remember that one because that's got to do with cancer. Concerns that fluoridating water and fluorosilicic acid have been voiced for many years. The conventional wisdom, however, has been that if a buffering agent is added simultaneously with the fluorosilicic acid, the finished water would not have a corrosive effect. Oh, God. The issue, however, received renewed attention in 1999 and 2000 when several studies detected associations between fluoridation 
and elevated blood lead levels among children living in both New York State and Massachusetts. Although the methods used in these studies have been criticized, more recent research has tended to confirm that the fluoridation slash lead link is real, not a mere statistical artifact. Oh, now see here we go back in 2007, at least they're moving a little forward, a team of researchers from the University of North Carolina hmm, submerged lead-containing brass pipes in water with various water treatment chemicals, including silicofluorides under carefully controlled conditions. The authors found that silicofluoride significantly, significantly increased the level of lead in the water, particularly when added in conjunction with chloromines and chlorine, as the authors noted. Wow. See, I grew up swimming in chlorine, too, so I... I wonder to this day how much damage was done to me, you know, in my life. And, uh, because my mom was crippled. My father at the end of his days, cancered. Uh, my brother was crippled in an accident. And here I am walking around 59 years old, like a 40 year old, and, uh, two broken fingers on my list of injuries. And I don't count the, uh, hernia thing as an injury. That was, a survive i don't know how to explain that but uh it crippled me and all that but it wasn't it was so uh difficult for the medical establishment to come to to terms with it that it had to go around them to get recognized by a surgeon and there was no direct link to the sur they were key doing everything they could to not send me to a surgeon that's and i was about ready to croak it was funny. It's funny now. It wasn't funny at the time. But I'm starting to think about all these chemicals and additives and this is is and that is this is and all the traveling from country to country I've done. This country has it this way. That country has it that way. Well, the good side for me is I grew up in the most dangerous place in the world. Because it seems that a Californian born pre-1950 or and 60 is uh, physically capable of consuming just about any damn thing that the system can throw at us and with a little luck survive it grim's still here mary's still here mary got a little sick but she got over it she beat the cold or illness whatever she got her now her voice isn't a hundred percent but I recognized it was her this time on the radio when she did radio last night. And I had a chance. Cir Cirque was uh, out to the relatives. So uh, I stayed up late and listened to the show live. And she only did an hour. And I was kind of disappointed. She was getting on a roll, talking about stuff. And I was interested. And then she said, I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to call it a night and save my throat. And I went, I understand because I do this. And I know how <laughs> I know how it feels when... Uh, my nose is stuffed up a little bit, and I don't feel like, yeah. But Mary, she was a trooper. She did it anyway. Looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday, but I don't think she said she's got a appointment next Friday. Won't be available to do her program, the Rocket Chair Podcast, next week. But we'll catch her Wednesday. So anyway, like I said, I'm glad to see you're back, and I'm looking for ways to dodge. I think I hit the end of this thing. Whew. No, is there more? Oi, 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 oi. You know what? There's more and more and more and more and more and more. But uh, I'm going to read the very last of this little bit I started. And uh, then I'm going to abandon that and kill the end of the show with something else. <clears throat> now, prior to the present study, no one had looked at brass corrosion by combinations of either chlorine or chloramine with water fluoridating agents. Several factors applicable to such combinations can produce more corrosion than either of the disinfectants or fluoridating agents alone. And, and they're going to try to tell us that they didn't know this in, what, 2000, 2007. Now, in, in a world where scientists are shut down and stopped 
you're going to tell me that somebody didn't trip over this when it happened. You know, there was no uh, opposition to any of this. And the CDC had to be called in, you know, 50 years into this experiment with fluoride to save us. And I think they knew all along that what they're doing was going to give them the results they got. I think they did this to us on purpose. And, wow, Jerry over on BitChute, now he's more ballsy than me. He calls right out for, we need to stop this and I'm going to find a way to do it. And this is the steps I'm going to take. Are you with me? I'm not Jerry. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'm way too old and way too distant and way too far out in the, the dork world. You know, to ever be taken seriously by anybody that has uh, power, I don't know, the power to change anything. I don't think people really want to change anything anyway. I believe they're more afraid of the change to come than fixing the problem that they got that exists already. And it shows itself in their reluctance to uh, leave the city. You know? I don't think any of us are trapped anywhere uh, until we're you know, handcuffed and taken away by the authorita. Then you're trapped. But until then, you're in a free-range prison. You, know, you can come and go as you like. So where, does, where did they wear us down and... Uh, Maybe it's the prices of everything, because when I was a kid, you know, the old, when I was young, you could go to the store with a quarter and blah, 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 blah. And here we are in, you know, 2019, and the kid comes and asks for 50 bucks to go to 7-Eleven and get a Coke. And it, it's just that that bad, inflation, taxes, and the crap fiat currency that we get to play with. It's... Uh, they distract us with the debit cards, you know. Then you're not constantly aware that cash is worth fuck all and you can't buy anything with it. And then you try to spend it. And if you don't have small enough bills, people won't even deal with you, you know. And then if you got too much money in small bills, eh, then you're a drug dealer. So no matter what direction you try to, to deal in fiat currency with, unless you're wealthy and you have a banker friend that can wash it for you, you're not going anywhere. That's that's a poor man's dream. You know, it's a it's an illusion. If you, I tried to bring this up on the dork table one time, and, and nobody understood really what I was trying to say at, to the to a point of serious. They just kept clowning on the point and what the story was. If you were driving home from work on a quiet road and you saw a box or a bag on the side of the road and you got curious and stopped to see what it was. And you open that box, and inside it, bunch of $100 bills, pounds and pounds. Could be a million dollars worth of $100 bills in that box. What are you going to do with it? Where, where are you going to spend a box of $100 bills? And what do you think you're going to buy? Because the IRS is all involved, the government, you can't spend more than $10,000 in cash without whoever you're buying, whatever you're buying from, they have to alert the authorita. Like, spending cash is a crime, people. This is how we're treated. Now, to the person that had that money in cash left to them by their grandma because she put it in the mattress, the government wants a cut. Of what? They've already taxed it. Why do they still... <laughs> they made a new tax for you so that you could lose more money. <laughs> Anyway, back to my story. If I was to find a million dollars in cash, what the hell am I going to do with it? I, I couldn't think of any. Where would you, you can't cash certain uh, denominations of money anymore. And it's, it's a nightmare. But it's still everybody's dream. Oh, I want to find a bag of money. Okay. And I still ask that question. What would you do with it if you had it? You, you can't spend it. I don't know how to prove that to you because I don't have a bag of money to give you to go, here, go try to buy a car in cash and see what happens to you. You will not believe how, uh, in, in the world of finance, how cash is treated. You are not welcome with your cash. Uh, Bank America, for example. I posted this link for Bank America a long, long time ago. 
and, and ever got any traction. People just don't give a shit. And they don't understand. Uh, when you go to Bank of America, certain branches of Bank of America, whatever the case was, and you try to pay your mortgage in cash bills, they won't accept it. Now, I don't remember. I guess I got a 20. No, I think I gave my last American money away. Let me look. I might have. No, I got a $20 bill right here. And on the bill, it says um, Federal Reserve note. Uh, there's nothing about pay to the bearer or anything. And I think it says in God we trust here somewhere. I don't even know if it says that anymore. But it says the United States of America Federal Reserve Note, period. It's got all the, you know, fancy etching and wonderful designs and all that. But it, it doesn't it doesn't say anything about actual money. Just uh, a Federal Reserve Note. And as Vinny has pointed out on the dork table many freaking times, uh, fiat currency is owned by the government. That's that's their money. They're the ones that bought it. They bought it with uh, debt attached to it. So it's the same thing as you bought your house. You know, you bought your house, but the bank owns it. But you're still living in it. So why could why would the money be any? Excuse me, I have a little hiccup there. Why would the money be any different? Hmm. Anybody got an answer? Oh, yeah, thank you, baby. My wife is to the rescue on the old elixir farm. Let's see. Let me look in the chat and see if I got anything going. Probably not. Yeah, Graham, I'm 59. I'm going to hit. If I live to September, I'm hitting 60. You know, and wow. Yes, the old fucker number, Miss Kate. And, uh. No, you you brought that to mind, Moose, when you were talking this morning, because you're, I think you mentioned your age, you were talking to Goober about something, either Goober or Cowboy Tech, yeah, I don't know, it was early this morning, my morning, you are late last night, and you mentioned you were in your 50s, and for some reason it dawned on me out of nowhere, I went, wow, you know, I'm 59, damn, if I make it to September, I'm going to hit 60, fucking hell, now, I guess it sounds um, sounds old, but it doesn't. You know, if you take care of yourself and you do, you stay active and and you live your life. I guess you don't feel that way. I think that maybe uh, if I was to stagnate, let my mind just you know mold away, and not be interested in all this uh, outside interference like fluoride. Find out where it came from, why it's there, what does it do to us. Arsenic poisoning. Hello, arsenic. Do a little research on arsenic. And I'm not talking to the you know the standard crowd so much. I'm more ranting uh, about my disappointment that it's there at all. Hmm. You know, when something's bad for us, the idea to me that we can even read, well, they only put so much of it. Look, it's legal. The legal amount that's uh, allowed by the FDA and the CDC Right there, my red flags go off, and I think, whoa. Hey, Grimner. Okay, he says, I'm going to quote him on this one. No banks were involved in the purchase of my house. True. That's, um, same here, Sir said that made a point of telling me about it, that they don't do the traditional, what I'm used to, financing homes, they use a different way. And the point I was trying to make about the currency and the bank not taking the money is the accounting on your property is done in credits. It's not done in cash. And whether we understand that or not, the bank understands that or not. And that's how their accounting's done. And that's where you got to do what they tell they tell you to do. And what's really bizarre is they own those Federal Reserve notes, and they still won't accept them as currency to pay the mortgage. Why? Why not just, you know, if they, if it's a paper shuffle, what difference does it make? But somehow in banking, it matters. But yet, well, I was raised, yeah, hey, you can put one of these anywhere in the world and you're going to get what you, what you want. And things changed. Now it's all plastic. Credit cards, debit cards, uh, cash. Nah, you ain't going anywhere with cash. You can't carry it. You can't take it. Excuse me. When you have it, 
What are you worried about? Somebody going to jack you for your money? Don't ever carry too much cash because somebody might rob you. Wow. So, back to the I found a box of money. So then you got this problem. What do I do with it? Well, I'm going to hide it in my house. Well, now you've got a big box of money and a secret. And you can't go to anybody because... All it's going to do is bring rain and get the government on your back. But it's still fed to the public as, oh, look at what you could do if you had this and you had that. It's not even believable. I read a few years back, before the internet, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, that the uh, people that live in cities like Bel Air, West Hollywood, not West Hollywood, but uh, Beverly Hills, the, where the, Malibu, all those properties, nobody, uh, nobody has a mortgage. Those properties are paid for in cash because the property taxes and good Lord, can you imagine a mortgage on a $5 million mansion, <laughs> a 25, they're, they're really gone all out. Now they got like Roseanne Barr building the biggest house in, uh, I don't know, Idaho or some goddamn place way back. But, you know, the, the celebrity thing, it, it doesn't even, huh, it doesn't really appeal to me very often. And when it does, it's fleeting. But, and it's usually revolved around music. But I've given up. You know, I don't show a lot of enthusiasm for the, for the music everybody posts now and whatnot. And I think a lot of that is just, uh, it, it's, I'm done. You know, I, I got, I was telling Cirque earlier today. And I think I've learned, you know, all the the things that I want to go out and learn. I've looked for them. I found them. I know them. Uh, some little idea might come along, and I'll I'll open a link and look at it, or like this fluoride thing. Just take a a concept I'm completely familiar with. I know inside out in my mind, but don't have experience explaining. Then read a link about it, and that link took me to places that I didn't really want to go. Arsenic in the water. Wow. Oh, well, you know, because now, according to the government, the CDC, and the FDA, there's a legal amount of arsenic in your drinking water. It's not moral and it's not ethical, but hell, you know, it's there, so make the best of it, suckers. And I don't like being treated like that. I think that uh, what started out as representative, you know, they were supposed to represent us. They got voted into a job, you know. Now it's a business where they go in there, they swear an allegiance to the Jews, and then they fuck everybody from day one to the day they get buried, and everybody in the center, with no concern for anything but self-preservation, personal gain, what's in it for me? And fuck all those people that voted for me, those idiots. What were they thinking anyway? What did they think I was going to do when I got to Washington? Worry about them? How ignorant can you be? I mean, think about it. If it was you. I've thought about it. If it was me. Here, I'll explain it to you. (laughs) If I was going to do something so um, narcissistic as to believe that if I sat in a seat of power, that I could make decisions for the people that would change their lives at that moment i'd lo- i'd know for sure i'd lost my fucking mind because none of that's ever happened every fucking seat of power has always been about controlling their population and some countries do it with rope and some countries do it with barbed wire but they tell you it's rope that's the point of the fluoride story you don't get the truth out of the mainstream about what the government is willing to do to you. No, you need water and here's some water. Drink it. It's all you're going to get. You can't get it any... Well, oh, you can go to the grocery store and you can buy it in a bottle made out of a petroleum product, which in another sense, there you go, brings up another problem that... I think I read that in. The lining of a plastic bottle, whatever's in it, you drink that. There's microscopic blah, blah, blah little things that get into your your uh, <laughs> your juice that you're drinking. So you end up drinking it. 
And well, okay, so I went to cartons. I went, wow, man, I can't do anything. Everything I do is bad for me. I'm so sad. <laughs> I mean, because I like orange juice, for example. But then I go, wow, if I get my orange juice out of a, in a get it in a plastic petroleum-based bottle, I'm defeating my own purpose. So, you know, that, that freedom of choice thing? <laughs> nah, we got had again. What they did <laughs> is they took all the shit that they couldn't sell to anybody without lying, and they made it a choice. Petroleum products, fluoride, all these arsenic. <laughs> and, hey, I know what we'll do. Let's prohibit cannabis and hemp. And we're going to promote all this other shit. Inoculations, flu shots, <laughs> taxes, <laughs> building walls to keep people out. Um, I mean, all these People and their wall, do they not understand that it's the government that is responsible for people coming into where they live and applying for assistance and receiving it? They're getting it because the government is allowing it. But you're mad at the person that's accepting it, not mad at the government for doing it. <laughs> now, you're going to employ the same bitch that fucked you in the ass that way, and you're going to have him build a wall all these years later because you got 30 million people living illegally in your country that you can't get rid of. <laughs> right, but they're going to build a wall, and, well, you know, that's going to shift the balance of everything. The whole world's going to change because Trump built a wall. Yeah, well, for everybody that builds a wall, there's going to be 100 people figuring out a way to get under, around, over, or through it. So, what is it? It's a divide and come. Mmm, this smells good. I smell ginger. Mmm, she put ginger in the tea. I like that, wife. Anyhow, mm. epic rant at the dork table today wow i was really upset i think that uh i feel bad for us not you know it's not like a selfish oh hopeless way 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 but i feel bad for us that that the majority of the population is so apathetic and so gung-ho about their government and their rights and all these lies and bullshit they've been fed for you know however many years you've been alive i've been fed the same shit i don't buy it I don't subscribe to it. I don't like it. But again, I'm the um, I'm that little fringe, you know. I'm that little pest in the corner that won't stop, and it's never going to be popular. I, I accept that. But the people that get it, you know, maybe there's somebody close to you that you can explain it to. I know Mary's been trying with her family, and you know, like she says, Facebook is where my family's at. You know, I'm going to say at the end of this show. Facebook is the cornerstone of the problem because when you're dealing with that many people, there's no way to manage what anything anybody does. It's it's an illusion. All you can do is block, ignore, um, delete, but the damage is always done first before you can take an action to um, recover from it or to change the course that it's in. And this fluoride thing, if it's gone on this long and it's... 2019 and i'm reading today that they're getting the shit from china and its source is even more suspicious than the source they were getting it from in the first place then the end result has got to be more of it not less of it there you go society the collapse of our society jeez it doesn't have a foundation it's a it's a bad joke to me now, I know there's a lot of you out there that think that you have the best of the best of the best of the best of the best, and things could never be any better. And then there's others of you out there that think, uh, similar to what I think, that this is what mob control does, is it takes the attention off the problem and it puts it on the victim. You know, The victim did it. It's your fault for drinking it. We just We didn't make you drink it. We just limited your choices. You can drink the bottled water that's probably got added shit into it too. And if not added shit, it's in petroleum. So 
It's dangerous. You know, I would just want to mention to you guys, in the long run, as strong as we are, we're, we're also very fragile. You know, our systems can be manipulated in ways that if we're not told, if I hadn't been told, sat down and explained, hey, this is this, this is that, this is the other, I would have probably been beyond the years I'm at now and never known. But somebody got my attention with a thing and I listened to them and I looked around and I saw, wow, they're right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for hanging out with me on the Dork Table Podcast on this here 12th of December 2019. It's been a gas. And remember, drink up that water. It's good for you people. So uh, that's going to be the, that. And what do we got Saturday? I forget the day and such at the end of the show. We have tomorrow, we got Grimner opening up in the morning with some blues and uh Sometimes me and Cirque are watching movies and we've got family over, so I don't always listen to the blues, but I know I can. <laughs> I have to do it on my headphones when people are here. Anyway, we got the blues going into the trivia game where he whips our ass with his quick typing and vast knowledge of trivial shit that doesn't matter. <laughs> I know a lot of it too, but I'm just not as fast a typer. Moose and Kate and Rob and all those typer people. Beat the snot out of me when I play trivia, but I still likes to play. And then uh, we got Hal Anthony coming on Sunday night. Uh, well, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night to me at uh, 3 o'clock. I think that's Pacific time out in the West Coast. And he does Behind the Woodshed and enlightens us with his vast knowledge of how things can be dealt with in the proper way. Now, for the status that's out there, this I recommend that. If you're going to play the state game, you need to know how the state plays and play accordingly. Ah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Asshole Lees. Oy, too bad. Hey, Miss Kate. Uh, it's, oh, it's still not. I'm saying December, uh, January. Whoa, what the hell did I do here? Okay, now I get it. See, I got... Uh, uh, 112. Why do I keep saying December? Am I saying December? It could be a byproduct of my craziness, Mr. Grimner. But yeah, um, <laughs> December. I don't know. I don't care about the clock or the uh, calendar. I told Cirque that a couple of, maybe a month ago. I told her, I officially disavow your clock. Don't care. Don't want to hear about it, but I have to. <sighs> so woe is me. And then on Monday night, Coming back to reality, <laughs> we got Grimner doing Grimm's leftovers. I enjoy the shit out of Grimm. I like his approach. I like his style. It's good to hear him. I recommend it for the Monday night crowd at 7 o'clock. And then on Tuesday, me and Vinny started um, the In a Perfect World podcast. And, well, me and Vinny aren't getting along right now. So I'm going to do it solo for a bit unless uh, I get a volunteer or a hostage. And then on Wednesday, what do we got going on Wednesday? Anything? Oh, uh, Grammy. Ah, Grammy's back this Wednesday, but not Friday. And then I'm back Thursday with my midnight show called 20% Off. And uh, Grim and Miss Moose do the uh, Freakers Ball on Friday after Miss Mary. Well, there's a schedule for all you people that can follow a schedule. I don't do so good with it. Anyway. Thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, giving me a chance to uh, actually learn something more about the fluoride. I don't know if I would have read that from front to back uh, if I wasn't doing it on the radio. It, it was so disappointing to um, maybe that's why we're where we are is because the truth is so it sucks. And then once you know the truth, what do you do with the truth? Hand it off to somebody else, I guess. Well, we're going to keep trying until we find a way that works. And uh, this is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table saying, see ya, see ya, see ya.